So welcome all. In this particular lesson, we are going to understand the concept called as the files and stream from the object oriented programming languages in C++. So without wasting any time, let us start with the first lesson that is the concept of streams. Now before that, let us try to understand what we are going to learn in this particular unit that is called as the files and stream. So the first term that we are going to understand here is the concept of stream in the programming. So what do you mean by the streams in the programming? What are the different types of streams are available in the programming? And what are their uses that we are going to understand first within this unit? After that, we are going to understand what is the concept of file. So what do we mean by the file? How the files are stored on the hard disk? And what are the different types of files available? in the programming that we are going to learn in this unit. Afterwards, we are going to understand which are the different operations performed on using performed on the file by using the C++ programming languages such as opening a file and closing a file, reading the data from the file and writing the data to the file. And at last, we are going to understand how we can manage and manipulate the file pointers in a specific file by using the C++ programming. So that all things we are going to learn within this unit. So let us start with the point that we are going to learn in the session number 1. So that is the concept of streams in the programming. So here we are going to understand what do you mean by the streams and what are their significance in terms of the programming. So let us start. So what is basically a stream? So stream can be defined as it is basically a sequence of data or it can be also called as the flow of data. Now whatever data we use in a programming, it basically flows through the stream. Now a stream can be thought as a connection between the processor. So, processor is basically an entity where we run all the program that is the instruction processing the data executes and the input output devices. So, it is basically a connection between the processor and the input output devices. Now, for the sake of simplicity, how we are going to represent the stream, we are going to understand it diagrammatically or logically. Now, since we have said that it is a connection between the input output devices and the processor, for the sake of simplicity, we can call it as a processor or a program because we know that the program is run by the processor. So, we can use the term processor or the program alternatively. Now, here you can see the left hand side basically shows me the processor the right hand side basically shows me the IO devices and whatever the arrow which is the bidirectional arrow in between which carries the streams of zeros and ones can be represented as a stream. So, it is basically carrying the data which is in form of the binary stream. So, above stream can be thought as a bidirectional stream. So, it is basically carrying the data in both the direction that is from the processor to the IO devices and from the IO devices to the processor. Now, depending upon the direction of stream, there are the different types of stream exist in the programming. So, whether the stream is attached to the type of device which is the input or output device, it can be majorly divided into two types. So, let us try to understand these two types in the types of streams. So, the streams can be majorly divided into two types as I said earlier. So, first type of stream is basically called as the input stream. So, this is basically a stream connection to the input devices and it is used for reading of a data. The second type of stream is basically called as the output stream. Now, this is the stream connection to the output devices. And this stream is used for writing of data. Now, let us try to understand the input stream in detail. So, input stream basically carries the data from the input devices towards the program 
or towards the processor. So, in short, we can say the flow of data is towards the program. So, the direction of flow of data is towards the program in this case. And input stream is always used to read the data. So, this is the most important thing that you have to remember. The input stream is used to read the data. So, whenever we want to read the data, we have to make use of the input stream. So, here I have given the example. So, let us say there is an input device such as a keyboard and there is a program. So, my program wants to read the data from the keyboard. What I need to have here is something called as the input stream. So, you can see the input stream has a direction from the input devices towards the program. So, it carries the data from the input devices towards the program. So, this is basically the input stream where the program is going to read the data from the input device. Now, similarly try to understand the output stream. So, output stream basically carries the data from program or processor to the output devices. So, here the most important thing is the direction of flow of data. So, direction of flow of data is away from the program that is towards the output devices. Now, since it has the direction towards the output devices, we can say it is used for writing of data. So, let us try to understand it diagrammatically. So, we have now a program. And we have the output devices just like a monitor. So, I want to write the data or I want to print the data on the monitor through the program. So, in this case, what I will establish is the output stream. So, program will send the data towards the monitor. So, here you can see the direction of the stream is towards the monitor from the program. And it is the writing the data on the monitor. So, this is what the output stream is. So, that is all for the today's session. So, what we have learned today is what do we mean by a stream? So, it is basically a connection from the input output devices towards the program or the processor which carries the flow of data. Along with that, we have learned there are two types of stream, input stream and the output stream. So, hope you revise all this concept on this particular session. So, we are going to end this session here. Thank you. In the next session, we are going to learn about the concept of files.